My name is Dr. Jeff Barkey. I'm a board certified primary care physician. I've been in private practice for over 30 years. Looking forward to talking with you today about some of the COVID-19 realities and uh, myths. Hey, it's Rich, Tennessee Homestead. How the heck are you? I know I keep saying I'm not going to talk about COVID-19, but I wanted to throw this one together for you since it's back in the news again, where we're being told that it's all Donald Trump's fault that oh, we're just getting swamped with COVID-19 again. Yeah, yeah. So I thought I'd drag this doctor in. I, f I ran across this. This is out of PragerU, uh, an interview with a doctor on COVID-19. And I found it to be pretty interesting. And I've heard this from several other doctors that didn't get their YouTube channels taken down <laughs> and others that did. But the, the story runs the same. And the first thing you want to pay attention to is where the good doctor starts talking about the reason for the lockdown. Flattening the curve is necessary because of hospital capacity that we have in this country. What he didn't go into is that according to the hospital associations, the American Hospital Association and so forth, the reason we don't have the hospital capacity we used to is since the late 70s, we have went from... I believe it was 1,600,000 hospital beds down to under 700,000 hospital beds. We've lost half the capacity in several decades of hospital beds. Why? Uh, Medicare, Medicaid, yeah. yeah. And then we're, we lost a big chunk back after Obamacare came into play. Because what you had going there is the government, through Medicaid and Medicare, was telling you know, telling the hospitals, well, this is all we're going to pay you for this. Didn't take long for the insurance companies to catch on to that game. And they started doing the exact same thing. Large discounts. Put a lot of hospitals out of business. Well, when you lost the hospitals, uh, you lost those beds, you lost the staffs, you lost the ICU units, you lost the operating rooms, you lost the equipment. You lost all these things. It's out of the system now. Been going on for decades. Government wasn't going to say a word about it, okay? And they didn't want you to know that basically the reason we had a lack of hospital capacity is because of government meddling in our health care. Yeah, okay? So that one should wake you up just a little bit, and that's one of the things he goes into. This current spike was basically brought on by protesters and so forth, drove it up. But here's the real kick, butt kicker. If you go into the hospital right now today with a broken leg, yeah. you broke your leg, well, they're going to bill out your insurance company as you broke your leg. And they're going to bail out the government because they got a pile of money sitting there for them. If they test and find that you either have currently gotten or have the antibodies for, and this is why you're hearing a lot of these hospitals go, well, you know, even if you've got the antibodies for, for it, it could flare back up and, and you might get it again. That's a lie. They're collecting money from the federal government. Because now you're not hospitalized for that broken leg. You're hospitalized for COVID-19. Yeah. Adds to the records. You have a heart attack and they find out you had COVID-19. You didn't die of a heart attack. No, no, no. You died of COVID-19. See where these numbers are coming from? And here's the real kicker. As far as death rates go. Okay, all you need is either a positive test for having COVID-19 or a positive test for having the COVID-19 antibodies, and you're included in the death count, okay? Doesn't matter what you died of. You could have had a piano dropped on your head, and when they test you and you've got COVID-19, congratulations, <laughs> you were killed by COVID-19. You weren't killed by a baby grand falling on your head from four stories up. All right, that's what's going on out there. And here's the other thing. Influenza's 
and pandemics in this country had always been, they look at the total number of deaths by the population to see what percentage of the population died from this disease. Not with COVID-19. Now, you got to have it to be in the statistics. Because if they took the whole American count, that was what the CDC was doing for a while. Now they've changed that. That's why they changed that website. Okay, now you've got to have it and prove you have it, or at least the antibodies for it, to get included in the group, and then they figure out what the percentage of death rate is for COVID-19. Ha, ha. See what they're done? Yeah. It's a game, man. They're playing with your head. They're playing with your head. So be advised, and we'll listen to some more of what this doctor has to say. And the purpose of doing that was to so-called flatten the curve. And the idea was that we were worried about healthcare capacity, in particular New York, for a time in New Jersey, for a time even up in Seattle. The hospitals seemed to be overwhelmed by cases of COVID coming into the hospital. We're gonna shut down the economy, let healthcare capacity come back online, then we would open up the economy. Well, that's happened. There's plenty of healthcare capacity now, we know a lot more about the virus, who gets it, how to treat it, who's at risk. So there's no reason to continue to shut down the economies. We shut down the economy, now we opened it up. So people are going about their businesses, back to restaurants, back to retail, back to shopping, and they're gonna get exposed to the virus and that's okay. We wanna protect the most vulnerable. The other problem that we've seen is we've had massive protests across the United States and rioting. Thousands and thousands of people in almost every single state, almost all of whom were in close proximity to each other. Many of them were not wearing masks. So of course, a few weeks after these protests, we're gonna see a spike in cases. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. The problem with the spike in cases is not from restaurants that are all social distancing. Almost all of those restaurants now are requiring masks. The problem is not retail outlets that also require social distancing. The problem was massive groups of people throughout the country not socially distancing, exposing themselves. Now the good news is as I watch those videos, you don't see too many 65 year old or older in these protests. It's almost young people like you. So the average age right now of the new cases that we're seeing is about 31 years old. Those are the folks that have an easy time with this virus. As a matter of fact, it's almost hard to calculate the fatality rate of people that are young that get this virus. There's so many zeros after the decimal point um, that it's hard to calculate. CDC just yesterday came out and said the fatality rate in total is about 0.4%. What does that mean? Well, in comparison to influenza, that is somewhere around 0.15 or 0.2%. Um, so the overall fatality rate, at least based on current data, is higher than influenza. But what we're seeing is every week as we do more testing, as we get more data, the fatality rate is dropping. And the fatality rate for a young person is way below that of influenza. As a matter of fact, a young person has a less than 25 years old, you have a 50 times greater risk of dying from drowning than you do from dying from COVID-19. And a much higher risk of dying from an automobile accident than you do from COVID-19. We're not closing swimming pools. Don't give Governor Newsom any ideas. And we're certainly not shutting down the freeways. As a matter of fact, me driving out here today, one of the advantages of what's going on right now, no traffic, that was <laughs> awesome. So what's happening, if you and I walked out of here and you fell and hit your head and you ended up in an emergency department, they would test you for COVID. And if you were to test positive for COVID, even though you have no symptoms, you're now a hospitalization for COVID-19. That's what we're seeing. In addition, we've now opened up healthcare facilities for what was previously shut down as considered non-essential. So somebody now going in for shoulder surgery or knee replacement surgery or whatever it is, is automatically tested for COVID-19. And if they're in the hospital and they test positive, it's a hospitalization for COVID-19. So we're seeing less emergency room visits for acute illness. We're seeing less ICU, ICU admissions, that's what I mean. 
We're seeing more people coming into the hospital for the elective procedures and so forth that were previously deemed non-essential. And the length of hospitalizations for COVID patients is dramatically reduced because we're a lot better at treating this. And once again, first broke out, I was saying I was looking at the numbers from all over the world, and it appeared that this was no worse than common influenza. This doctor now at the tail end of this thing is saying pretty much the same thing. I, again, stresses the fact that you know, COVID-19, if you, if you got it, no matter what you're in the hospital for, you're now a COVID-19 patient. It's a scam, folks. It was a, started out as a cover-up for so that the government could, could have a way of not having to come out and admit that, hey, we've been messing with your health care system for a lot of years, and now it's going to jump up and bite us in the tush. That's what began all this. COVID-19 is not that dangerous. Mishandled, yeah, yeah. Hit Europe pretty hard. You bet it did. Okay, but they are into socialized medicine and any kind of a pandemic, even a bad flu, sets them back on their heels. Truly does. So, once again, he's talking about that sort of a issue uh, with the mislabeling. There, the, a lot of these patients probably that have been labeled COVID-19 patients hospitalized is so much bunk. Here in Tennessee, we lost 650, 640 people from COVID-19. A lot of it has done the way they're calculating it now because you had to have had COVID-19 to even be counted and then they compare the deaths against that number, not against total population. That's where they're getting you. Uh, and it's driving the numbers up. They're making it sound more fatal than it is. These doctors are all saying the same thing. If you're young, you're in the 50s, down, down to virtually babies, and you don't have any other health issues, you're healthy, COVID-19 is going to be nothing to you. Very rare that it's going to cause enough a complication to put you in a box. Not, as, not nearly as hard on you as standard influenza. How many flu seasons have you sat out sitting at home? Be advised you've been lied to. Quit letting the media lie to you because you're going to get a ton of it flying at you here directly because they're trying to use it to pry Donald Trump out of that White House. They're running out of things to hang on to. They, they couldn't milk him into uh, sending troops and so forth into these cities to settle them down. When the news media, federal marshals were sent in to help protect some of the federal court buildings, things of this nature. And the media's out there, they replied, you know, they were referring to these guys as Trump's occupying army. Yeah, now these are U.S. Marshals, which most U.S. Marshals' duties are tasked to do those kind of things, protect courthouses and so forth. He didn't do anything. He just increased the staffing to protect these courthouses during these, these riots. Wasn't like he put troops out there on their streets. Heaven help him if he had, okay? As they would have been screaming martial law and he's going to become a dictator and everything else. He's handling this very well. I'm sure that Donald Trump would have liked to have said, okay, we've had enough of this stuff. We're going to sweep these cities. We're going to clean these messes up. We're going to be done with it. And we don't care if the Democrats that are running this place like it or not. People are dying. But he can't. And he knows he can't. Because of the firestorm the media would perform on. Something to think about. Let's finish this up. And i got a little more to tell you. And I'm done with this. Obviously. And so if you looked at, the, at a visual of the size of a coronavirus versus the size of the filtering ability of a mask, it's like the equivalent of building a, a chain link fence to try to keep out mosquitoes. That's the size differential. So although the virus can travel in droplets and the masks can somewhat collect those droplets and prevent those droplets from going out, there's still a very imperfect mechanism to try to prevent the virus spread, and we have studies with influenza and the common cold that says that says they just don't yes. work. Yep. Ah, good lord! Uh, you know, I don't know why scientists and medical professions, when stuff starts coming out and they really don't understand and they don't know, 
they come out and tell us the truth. We don't really know for sure how this works. Instead, they want to be the experts. And they want to give us some garbage. Now you've got the two schools, and I think the latter school is going to finally win, is that these masks do absolutely nothing to protect you from COVID-19. Okay? Uh, and this doctor says the best. Okay, let's wrap this thing up. Folks, I don't want to, I don't want to pull an arm out of socket, pat myself on the back, but when this COVID-19 stuff first came to the shores and all the panic started ensuing, I'd went out and looked at the available information, made a rational look at it as far as the facts, not, not the media hype, not the nonsense, the facts. These are the facts. It is no worse than influenza. If you take per capita, like they do with influenza, deaths per year per capita, okay, and applied that to COVID-19, you would have so many zeros after the point that it would be way down the line. So they even had to try to cover that up because they, the last thing they want you to understand is, is that the media is full of crap. Half of these doctors are full of crap. The government... Okay, because it's the government that runs the CDC. And I can tell you now, if any of you have been out there following the CDC website, you know what I'm talking about. They have changed stuff. They have pulled pages. They have done amazing things out there to the website. It's like information's here today and gone tomorrow. Because they begin to realize, whoops, we got information out here that makes us look stupid. And they don't want to be looking stupid. So they go hide it. Oh, I'm sure it's in an archive somewhere. And sooner or later, it'll be fished back in. But right now, they're hiding they don't want to mess with the narrative. It's time we started standing up and telling the government we've had about enough of this. I got another video to do up today, so I'll still be wearing the same shirt, folks. Uh, but I want to talk to you a little bit about what's going on out there with these crazy cities. And I know some of my subscribers have to work in these cities and drive through these cities and so forth. I want to give you some heads up. Make you aware. Keep you safe. As read Jesse Homestead, I love you guys and I appreciate you. This COVID-19 stuff, it's a mild flu. Unless you got a bad heart, you got a bad case of diabetes. Uh, I've had, if you've had pneumonia numerous times, you might want to try to protect yourself a little bit from it. Um, but if you're relatively healthy, don't worry about it. Okay. It's just a mild flu. Quit letting them yank you around. If you're in one of these blue states and blue cities where they're throwing you in jail for sticking your head out your window, that's on you, brother. I can't help you with that. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I just can't. Uh, wow. You need to get out of them cities. They're, they're going to explode here shortly. You really do. Like I said, love you guys, appreciate you. Hey, do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe button because it'll probably defund this one because it's talking about that C word. Y'all take care. Talk to you soon.